Hello, everyone. Today, the uh, so-called Brexit vote is uh, going on in the United Kingdom. Now, of course, there's been much, um, well, much said uh, about uh, what would happen if the Brexit happens or if the Brexit doesn't. Uh, there's been YouTubers uh, making uh, statements uh, either on either side. There's been uh, uh, pundits on either side. There's been a lot of scaremongering. Uh, there's been a lot of commentary that insists that there will be world chaos if the United Kingdom exits the EU. Well, by the time this video uh, is uh, edited, rendered, and online, the results will probably be in. But, as I'm recording this, the results haven't started showing up yet. And it's... Uh, it, it's... Well, I don't really care one way or the other whether the Brexit happens or not. Uh, for the, I really believe that, for the most part, it's going to affect me not at all. Uh, sure, some people will be affected one way or another, but I think in the grand scheme of things, it's going to be overall pretty much a wash uh, once the initial chaos settles, and I don't think that initial chaos is going to last very long. It's not so much the merits or lack thereof of the Brexit that I want to talk about. It's some of the idiocy in the arguments on either side that has, has me uh, thinking about it. Uh, for instance, uh, Thunderfoot has put up a number of uh, videos on the Brexit, and uh, while he is a scientist, and as near as I can tell, a good one, and a lot of his videos have been really quite informative. His Brexit videos have come across as, well, intellectually dishonest, I think is the best way I can put it. Uh, his, the first one I watched uh, was full of non sequiturs, uh, where he'd make some sort of a statement, and then somehow that meant you had to agree with another statement. Now, I'm not the only one that noticed this. Uh, others have commented on it. But it's clear that Thunderfoot does not want a Brexit. That's perfectly fine. He's entitled to his opinion on that. And as I said, I don't care one way or the other. Uh, I'm in Canada. There might be some impact. There might not. I don't actually care. The Brits can do whatever they want in their sovereign nation. That's really what this comes down to. If they want to tell the EU to get lost, they're in totally entitled to do that. If they want to stay in the EU, they're equally entitled to do that. Now, the fact that, as it stands right now, it looks like it's, uh, uh, you know, something like a 50-50 split, uh, it's uh, maybe not so, uh, so conclusive one way or the other, uh, really. But the commentary I've seen has been full of scaremongering and things that don't necessarily follow. Uh, there's been a lot of scaremongering about how world trade will collapse if Britain exits the EU. Well, nobody is actually given the mechanism by which world trade would totally collapse. Quite frankly, for the most part, trade on, around the world will continue unabated with no impacts to it. Uh, anybody trading with EU countries will still be trading with the EU countries. Uh, that will any agreements that are in place and so on there will continue to be in place. It's only trading directly with Britain that might be impacted, and that's assuming that the uh, politicians and the like don't actually 
exercise some intelligence and look through the uh, their trading partners and say, yeah, we're exiting the EU. How about an interim agreement where the basic provisions of the existing arrangement uh, through the EU continues until we negotiate something else? Uh, it wouldn't take much to get something like that through because it's basically asking for the status quo. And then, if need be, there can be some additional bilateral arrangements and multilateral arrangements negotiated and all that business. But here's the thing. Even in the absence of trade agreements, trade between countries is possible. Sure, there may be some slight additional customs complications or what have you, but the fact that there wouldn't necessarily be a trade agreement does not prevent trade. And this is where the arguments seem to fall apart. They, they seem to imply that you have to renegotiate all of your trade agreements before you can trade, which is patently ridiculous. Uh, people were trading across borders long before there was trade agreements. So, seriously, let's just grow up a bit here and be honest. There will, there will potentially be some disruption. It may impact certain industries. It, it uh, may impact uh, negotiations that are underway. And it, there certainly be some cost to negotiating new agreements. But it doesn't mean that the entire trade network falls apart. Even as long as neither the UK nor the EU embargoes each other, trade will continue there too. Uh, it just wouldn't make sense not to. Now, there's other issues uh, beyond just trade. There's immigration and so on. And there's something to be said that uh, Britain uh, should be able to control its own borders as long as it's going to be a sovereign nation. And saying that uh, uh, we don't want to allow these types of people in because they're a risk to our way of life or something like that, they should be allowed to do that. And I guess that's one of the things the Brexiters want. But doing that isn't going to magically make it impossible for people to travel to Britain. It's not going to make it impossible for Brits to travel into the EU. Sure, you might have to deal with passport control or something like that, but you still do anyway. They're not in that particular uh, zone. Uh, what is it? The Schengen zone area, whatever the blazes it's called, if I have my facts right. Nothing says they can't be in that zone, even if they're not in the EU, since there are countries in that zone that aren't EU members. And besides, nothing says Britain can't say, okay, you citizens of X, Y, and Z countries, we like you. You can come in without a visa. Uh, it's working perfectly uh, to do that, say, uh, between... Uh, uh, Canada and the United States. Uh, now, we've got agreements going on, but uh, there's enough traffic and trade across the border that it would be a pain to have to have a visa every time you go and or to have a massively complicated visa application process. Uh, barring uh, 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 any anything that, that uh, is... Uh, iffy, like criminal records, I'm pretty sure I can show up at uh, pretty much any Commonwealth country and apply for the visa at entry to the country. Uh, and it's not a terribly onerous process. Just showing up is basically the application. You go through the immigration process. Uh, there's no reason that couldn't be the case with the EU and a a Britain that's not in the EU. And of course, there's a whole bunch of other arguments, one way or the other, uh, that uh, rely on fear-mongering and, and all of that jazz. Uh, or they re rely on non-sequiturs, like Thunderfoot's video did. And I saw a couple of uh, excerpts from... Uh, uh, a debate that Thunderfoot had with uh, Sargon of Ak Akkad, 
and uh, Thunderfoot selected the excerpt, if I recall correctly, and it still makes makes him look like an ass. Uh, he's talking over uh, Sargon and uh, basically shouting him down, uh, argument through volume or what have you. And that is not the way to win your argument. Now, some of that is the personality that Thunderfoot has projected on YouTube, uh, in particular in his anti-feminism uh, videos, and that's a, a, a different uh, topic altogether, and a lot of those videos have been fairly, uh, fairly informative. Although, I think some of the more recent ones have also been degenerating a bit into non-sequiturs and... Uh, uh, and just, uh, this is true by assertion and, and things like that. Uh, but still, his science content is pretty much rock solid, near as I can tell. So, uh, it, and, and this is the, uh, the problem that you see with any type of debate like this, is it's not really a debate. You've got a bunch of emotional positions and people, once they've, they've staked out their position on something this emotional, they will not change their opinion no matter what facts are presented. It doesn't matter which side of the uh, argument they're on. And you can't even really class it as a debate. It's really just an argument. Now, is the vote going to go for a Brexit or not? We don't know yet when I'm recording this. Uh, if the results are in uh, by the time the video is posting, I'll I'll put a notation on the video about that, uh, about the results. Uh, but as I said earlier, I don't actually care, and I don't believe that a Brexit will lead to substantial long-term ill effects. In fact, I don't think it will cause any long-term effects whatsoever. Uh, there will be some initial volatility in, say, the mar in the markets and so on, but there's always volatility in the markets for one reason or another. So that's not something that's anything to be terrified about. Uh, if there are problems as the result of a Brexit, well, then obviously the people in impacted by them will be looking for solutions. It's not like just because there's a problem, it's the end of the freaking world. Uh, people will look for solutions if the problem is sufficiently painful. Maybe it'll hurt Britain. Maybe it won't. Uh, I'm not convinced by the arguments either way. Uh, I'm not convinced that a Brexit is going to be brilliant for Britain, but I'm not convinced it's going to be harmful either. I think on the, on the balance, it's probably going to be indifferent. And that's basically why I don't actually care one way or the other. Still, uh, if there is uh, impacts, uh, people will deal with them. If the EU doesn't want to trade as much with Britain, I'm sure the Commonwealth will happily continue trading. Maybe trade more. Uh, I'm sure the United States will, be, will happily continue trading with Britain. Uh, Canada certainly will. Uh, I'm sure uh, other Commonwealth nations will, will continue as well. They're not going to really care. There's already uh, diplomatic arrangements and so on uh, within the Commonwealth. And I can't believe that uh, even, even the United States would chop off their nose just to spite their face in this. Uh, they're not going to say, well, we're not going to deal with Britain because they're not in the EU anymore. Well, that would be stupid. Say what you will about uh, American foreign policy. Uh, they're not that stupid because the people that want to trade will trade. Uh, it, that's just the way it works, right? So whatever happens, Brexit or not, I don't think it's going to make any difference. Uh, certainly not long term, and I don't even think it'll make a substantial difference in the short term. The people in Britain are still going to need the stuff that they're importing, or they're still going to want it. They're still going to they're still going to import stuff, and people outside of Britain will still want uh, some amount of their uh, exports. So 
maybe you're selling to a different customer, but does it make any difference, right? But this whole debate or argument hasn't been helped by things like saying, oh, there's a TV tax in, uh, in, uh, in the UK, so therefore we shouldn't do a Brexit. What? That's the type of non sequitur I've, act I, I've seen, uh, and it just doesn't make any sense. And, you know, like, does this whole Brexit thing has really been a, a popcorn uh, event. You know, sit back and you eat your popcorn and you go, ha ha, that guy's an idiot, or ha ha, that guy's an idiot, or, oh, look, the polls are up, the polls are down, the polls are up, the polls are down. Uh, it's, it's just, really, it's just a bunch of entertainment. There's nothing really significant actually going on. Uh it's, you know, it's kind of like the Scottish independence referendum from a while back. It's really, if that had gone for uh, independence for Scotland, it's, it wouldn't have made a particularly big difference either. It would have impacted the Scots and maybe the, uh, the English and the, the Welsh some, but it wouldn't really have impacted most anybody else. And, and that, that's the thing, right? Uh, there would have been a period of chaos while they adjusted. But seriously, if the, if the Brexit referendum goes leave, they're not going to be leaving tomorrow. They have to actually uh, set up the, uh, the various... Um, uh, mechanisms that need to be in place to make it happen. So, okay, so the vote is for, if the vote is for leave, it's not going to be, tomorrow, the UK is not in the EU. It's not going to be that instant. Uh, there's going to have to be a little bit of ramp down and so on and transfer of, of various things and so on. Some, and any contractual commitments will have to be examined and all of that. So it's not going to happen overnight. Sure, when it happens, like whatever the vote, if the Brexit is, if, if it's a leave vote, there will be a point where the, uh, it will be tomorrow they're not in, but immediately after the vote is not that, that time. There, there's going to be some... Uh, bureaucratic things that have to be sorted out first. There will be time to sort out any of the major hiccups that are likely to occur, that at least the ones that the people involved can foresee. And even with a, yet a leave vote, it may be that uh, once the uh, process gets started, it may turn out to be impractical and it may not happen anyway, but let's assume if a leave vote happens that it does happen and it happens quickly. Well, again, there'll be a little bit of chaos. The world will get used to the new world order and life will go on. Anyway, uh, that's my ramblings on the Brexit. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe uh, for sure. Um, you certainly won't be notified if you don't subscribe. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.